my name is Kelly. I'm a physical therapist, and I'm here to tell you we are in our infancy as physical therapists in the telehealth arena. So we are very much behind many of you in general medicine, um, but there are some frontiers, and while they may not seem like frontiers to where some of you are, for our practice, um, they're very exciting. So um, let's see if I can... Okay, so the frontiers that we see in our industry First of all, we have a crisis, which I'm sure you're all very aware of, um, in how we're managing musculoskeletal conditions here in the U.S. So that's the first piece of, for physical therapy where we see an enormous opportunity in the telehealth space. There's also a huge value proposition for physical therapy right now because we're basically cheap. We're a very low-cost care provider. We have very effective outcomes, and we have low side effects. So we don't do anything that's generally going to hurt people we have the move, which is obviously a good thing. And then the other thing, again, I mentioned that we're behind it in our infancy. One of the big opportunities for us right now is licensing. So we have a physical therapy compact that just started that gives us privileges in other states to practice without getting full licenses in every state that we would be in. So we all know that we have a huge issue with musculoskeletal care. One in two of us will have a musculoskeletal injury or some sort of condition this year and that's costing us over $200 billion each year in healthcare spending. And that's really not even considering really what's more like 500 to $600 billion in spending around pain. So this is where we really see some opportunity for physical therapy. Because I'm sure you're all very, very aware of the opioid epidemic, but it has a lot of its roots in the musculoskeletal care problem that we have right now. About 75% of prescriptions for opioids are because of a musculoskeletal condition. And so the really big value proposition for us is there are multiple studies right now that are showing that physical therapy first is the best way to manage musculoskeletal care. And that's a really big deal in low back pain right now. Even to the perspective that the payers are coming to us and telling us that. They're looking at all of our claims data as well as our clinical knowledge and clinical research to say that not only getting to a PT first decreases the number of visits, but the cost of care. Also, if you get to a PT first, the likelihood of an opioid prescription dramatically decreases. So the problem is not rocket science here. Obviously, we have rising health care costs. But the really big problem in physical therapy is access. Christy talked about access. But as physical therapists, we have a huge problem because not only do we not have very many physical therapists, um, we are not very well distributed. So we have very big problems in rural areas. Literally, I was talking to a professor in North Carolina, I'm sorry, uh, North Dakota, and they have literally about 14 counties that have one person. So for an entire county, they have one provider, which is a huge issue. Also, the thing that surprised us the most is in densely populated areas like here, people don't want to get in traffic to go to therapy. It's not like your physician visit where you're all, all right, I'll drive in, you know, I'll sit in traffic for a half an hour. It's only once every three months. You have to see your therapist maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. So it's a much bigger time commitment. The other thing is as America gets busier, people don't have time during business hours and our clinics are generally open from eight to five. How many people have time between eight and five to go spend an hour in PT two to three times a week? It's just not as realistic as it once was. So the solution for us is a telehealth component. But I think one thing that we're learning rapidly, as Christy said, is it needs to start to be integrated into our care model. It can't just be this separate thing that sits next to or outside of our clinical practices in the brick and mortar environment. So, it's cost effective, we're finding. We can actually reach more people with less brick and mortar clinics. Um, it's accessible. We have many PTs that actually are pretty happy to get, on the, get online and treat between 6 and 10 p.m. They actually enjoy that. It doesn't take up their Saturday where they'd have to go work extra hours in a hospital. They can do it in times where they wanna work but also where patients want to be served. And then it's been fairly easy to use. One of the, um, which surprised us, one group that um, we are working with, they actually found that patients in their 60s are one of their biggest groups for the population they're serving. 
We're also seeing this where we're primarily working right now is in the employer environment. So employers are also very much having a musculoskeletal injury crisis, um, but they're also putting PTs first. They're changing the care path. So this is a model that Intel took. We weren't involved, but it's something that we've used with some of our employers. The other thing that the two employers we're working with, um, they have three shifts. So the traditional system isn't working well for them. They have people that are working from 11 to 7 in the morning. So getting to a clinic is usually when they're sleeping. It doesn't work as well. The other frontier for us, again, we're in our infancy and very behind some of the other professions, but we actually have a compact now. So as of um, Monday, another state joined. Um, we have 21 states that if your home license is one of those green states, you can actually apply for a compact privilege and not have to go through the full licensing requirement in any of those other green states. So that's something that's really expanding our ability as telehealth providers to provide a little bit more care without having licenses in every single state. We have some pretty big hurdles that are remaining still. The biggest thing for physical therapy right now is payment policy. So Medicare doesn't recognize us as telehealth providers outside of some experimental projects that they're working on. So that's a limitation. And then there's also a lot of variability in the contracting and then some of the state laws. Having to figure out all the different state laws as they're changing rapidly within our practice act as PTs has also been something that we're still working through. And then finally, poor tracking or reporting. Um, we don't have, we have some place of service codes and some modifiers sometimes, but it isn't clear what private payers want us to use in many cases. So um, even Medicare was using the argument, well, there's not that much utilization of telehealth care. Well, I don't know that that's true. I've talked to many colleagues and PTs that do a little bit of it, but they just bill it regularly, which is obviously not appropriate, but also it's not giving us any data to try to affect change with. So this is something that is becoming a little bit more of a problem in our industry. And then how are we meeting the challenge of telehealth? So um, I'm here on behalf of Telemovement and our product is Everflex. And we're trying to reach out to specific um, self-insured employers and we're really trying to one, decrease the risk and the incidence of more invasive care for musculoskeletal injury. We're also trying to help them improve productivity and absenteeism and then finally, we have an access issue, as I mentioned. We're trying to improve access when there's a geographical issue, when there's financial concerns, um, or just an inability for that person to get into care. So what we do is we use a combination of telehealth and then also an algorithm that we've created based on research for musculoskeletal assessment. So the patient basically, or the worker, basically identifies a problem area, they answer some general questions online, and then they receive either one, a recovery plan that self-adjusts, so it's a self-help tool, or they speak with a telehealth physical therapist, or they do both, whatever is necessary or both for them. And then if those don't work, then we refer them to a brick and mortar clinic. So um, my prediction and the thing I wanted to just say is healthcare pathways will change drastically for physical therapists over the next five years, and it is going to include a digital component in our minds. Um, and this is really scary for a lot of my colleagues. They are very afraid of this taking away brick and mortar visits. But the problem we have in PT right now is we're only serving about 10% of people that need musculoskeletal care. We're concerned with that other 90%. If we don't start serving those patients, they're not gonna have the outcomes they need and costs are gonna continue to go up. So that is, am I on time? I'm on time. <laughs> All right, so with that, I'll wrap up. Some questions? Hi. Um, I'm a physician, by the way. Um, so I have a question because I've actually looked at a couple of different um, telemedicine companies that are in the physical care space. I, I actually like the way you have the different options for, for patients. Are you also incorporating into your model a compliance tracking and outcome tracking um, aspect to what you're doing? We do, every patient has to do an outcome survey. It's loosely based on the Grok right now, and then we can track their performance, or actually their attendance or their compliance with their exercise program or recovery program. 
Yeah, so um, physical therapy requires the whole body. It's a little different than looking specifically at somebody and just talking. How do you address that? Do you use any extra cameras? Or are people using any special equipment at home? How are you doing that? It's a great question and what most of our colleagues are worried about. Um, not everyone benefits from this. So we do an initial screen and the component I didn't tell you is we, if they do need to see a telehealth provider, many times from the telehealth PT, they're referred to a physician or in clinic care. So there's lots of people that aren't helped with that, but we're finding there's a lot of musculoskeletal conditions that are acute and we can manage them online. So we do obviously, um, we use VC and um, we do have a camera, but we try not to get too into the movement analysis. If that's really something that needs to happen, they're best served in the clinic. So this isn't replacing PT care, it's supplementing and hopefully triaging some of the cases that really don't maybe need in-person care. Thank you so much, that was, that was fascinating. Can you say a little bit more about the compact? How to, that, that's new to me, and I, that's a fantastic way of being able to do multi-state treatment. Thank sure. You. So the compact just went into effect last April. They needed to get 10 states to pass compact legislation to do that. And so since then, we have a total of 21 states. So what it means is if uh, California is not a compact state, but I have a license in Arizona, and if that was my home state, as a physical therapist, I could apply to the PT compact to get privileges to treat in any of the other states that have adopted legislation. Um, and I have to follow the laws of that state. I usually have to pass a jurisprudence exam, but I don't have to do the continuing education for that state. I just do it for my home state. I don't have to pay full dues. Most of those things just go back to my home state. Okay. I think, uh, okay, maybe one last question. Other than the employer programs, I'm assuming the employers are reimbursing you guys? Like if a patient just comes in, has Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, Cigna, et cetera, how are you setting up reimbursement with those kind of settings? Or like you said, even with Medicare, how are you getting reimbursed for it? So at this point, we are only doing cash outside of the B2B or employer environment. So it is a $40 cash rate. Much of that cost or much of that fee goes to the physical therapist um, that's doing the treatment. Thank you so much for the great talk. Sure, thank, <laughs> thank you. you.